Hey what's going on guys, it is Sam or XJaws and today I'm bringing you guys a domination gameplay on the map of Havana and today I'm bringing you guys another gameplay with the Gold Galil. So this is probably the gold weapon that I've posted the most gameplays with, if not this weapon then maybe the FAMAS and uh, that's just because as of late I've been going through sort of a Galil phase. I've talked about this before a lot of times um, when there's a weapon in the game that I don't absolutely love but isn't necessarily bad um, such as the Galil. I'll start using it, I'll find success with it and then I'll use it like you know uh, 10 or 15 uh, gameplays because I just you know attach to it and really like it and that goes probably for guns like the Galil, the Enfield, uh, the MPL for a little bit a lot of guns like that that aren't phenomenal but definitely aren't bad weapons so uh, what you're going to see in this gameplay, uh, something that I was working on is uh, sort of getting spawn traps going. And with an assault rifle, not that difficult in domination. Um, here on Havana, when they have the A flag, which was ultimately the goal to capture C and B and leave them with only the A flag, uh, what I was able to do because um, I also had this other good player on my team who I got matched up with randomly. His name was just a bunch of O's and zeros. I don't uh, really get the point of that, but a bunch of O's and zeros. And... Um, me and him were um, up in this, actually no, he wasn't up in this building with me, he was by the building to my right, which is the main way that they would exit from this little spawn trap area, and then the second way that they would usually exit from the spawn trap area back towards the A flag is the building that I'm in right now, because if you don't have one of your teammates up in this building, or even sometimes when you do have a teammate up in this building, they will spawn right at the bottom of the stairs, not the stairs that I'm looking at right now, not the, like, towards my back, the stairs that are towards my back, and uh, that can be a pretty big problem, so it was a good thing that I was up here preventing them from getting into this hotel building that is uh, over to my back, kind of to my right, I don't exactly know how to describe it the best, um, but yeah, a lot of people uh, like to escape this little spawn trap by running that way. And unfortunately, a couple of people were able to make it there. And I think they go ahead and capture C pretty soon. And we capture A and then the whole thing switched. But that's all right because there's another building that's really important for controlling the spawn trap. Another two sets of buildings um, that are really important for controlling the spawn trap. So um, like I said, for this side, uh, the side that I'm on right now, when you're spawn trapping them at A, the main building that they're going to exit on this side is the building that I'm just going to be running past on my left right now. That's the I'm not exactly sure what to call it, um, but that's the building where a lot of people will run through. Now, when you trap them at C, it's going to change. It's going to be the bar room, and a lot of people will run through that building. It's got a bunch of you know like bars, and uh, that that's the building you're going to want to control if you want to keep them back in C. As long as you don't go too far past that building, as long as you stay in that bar building, you will be able to keep them trapped at C. Now, the other main way that they're going to run is behind the bus in the building all the way towards the back of the spawn. And what you're going to notice, I believe a little bit later on uh, in this match, um, the OOO guy, he actually goes up in that building and he controls it pretty well and stops them from moving up into our spawn uh, or up past uh, their spawn, which is you know, the main spot that we were worried about. Uh, what you saw just right there is me and the teammates pushed up a little bit too far, and because they hadn't captured C yet, they actually ended up spawning over here on the left behind the building, uh, behind the uh, hotel building. And that's what I'm talking about, where if you push too far, it'll mess up the spawns. Now, typically, as long as you're towards the middle of the map like we were in this game, they wouldn't have spawned at B, but again, it was because of the fact that we pushed up a little bit too far, and that's something you don't want to do. So right now we get a three cap going and then it's just a uh, race to see which side they're going to spawn on. There's definitely some guys over here at A that I'm killing. I know there's also some guys over by C I can see on the radar. Unfortunately, I get grenade launcher right there. It spawns me at C, so I immediately think to myself that the spawn trap is going to move permanently back to A and that's the way the rest of the game is going to go. Uh, but because the 000 whatever guy uh, had a chopper gunner up in the air, it actually switched again, which is just... Uh, it, it's just a testament to how um, f frail, if that's the right word, uh, the spawns are in Black Ops. It's very difficult to hold the spawn trap unless you definitely have guys um, set up in like the defined points on the map that are going to prevent the enemy from um, being in a spawn trap or prevent the enemy from leaving their spawn trap. Uh, right here is the the building that I was talking about earlier towards the back of their map. Um, if they can't make it through the bar building, which is right in front of me right now, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the bar. 
uh, on this map in that little area, um, they're going to run towards me into this building or, like I said earlier, behind the bus. So once we had them in this little spawn trap set up, I uh, called in my uh, chopper gunner. Unfortunately, a lot of the guys were sitting back in the buildings, but I, I didn't really mind that much because I knew that every uh, second that I was still up in that chopper gunner was another second that, you know, the, uh, the tickets were counting up for us and uh, not for them. Um, one thing I thought I'd talk about, something that is from a very, very long time ago that um, I still remember, hopefully I remember it accurately, um, if you are ever wondering, you know, how many points you can get in domination, uh, pretty much, um, each, uh, flag thing is going to get you, I believe it is one point every six seconds, um, or I could, I could be wrong in it, but anyway, here's the way it works, um, for every minute that you are two capping the enemy, they are going to get 10 points and you are going to get, uh, 30, so you're going to gain by 20 points for every minute that you are two capping a team. So, for example, if you are, like, at the, towards the very end of a game and you don't think you can, you know, come back you can use that little table to you know figure out you know if they get 10 points this minute and I get 30 will we be able to come back multiply that by however many minutes if you are three capping an enemy obviously there's 40 points total to get uh, in a minute if all three caps all three flags are being captured so if your team has all of them the enemy is none you're going to get 40 points a minute by holding a three cap and those were that's the way it worked for Call of Duty 4 and I don't think it's changed I don't think they uh, did any changing to how many points you get or how fast you get them so um, hopefully that's still the way it works if not I'm sure somebody will correct me um, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it works Oh yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about in this video, and uh, I didn't want to make a whole video devoted to talking about this, because to be quite honest, I am not exactly sure what I would talk about. So, basically, for a while now, people have been talking about how boring Black Ops is getting, and some people out there might think it's already extremely boring, some people might think it's getting boring, and some people out there who are watching this video might absolutely love Black Ops. Either way, um, I thought I would, you know, tell you guys about this really cool video on YouTube. It is a trailer for Crisis 2. So, um, somebody linked me to this on Twitter the other day, and I gotta tell you guys, it's really, really cool, and I've never even heard of Crisis 1, never played it or anything like that and to see this trailer I'm thinking to myself this might be like the next really big first person shooter it looks absolutely awesome so anyway guys I would like you to if you'd like to um, check out the trailer it'll be in the link in the description of this video and I think you guys will really enjoy it it looks really like futuristic and awesome and depending on what the controls are like depending on what um, if you know they have dedicated servers because I believe it's an EA game uh, depending on what they're like um, and depending on you know how much advertising and support this game gets I might end up getting this game um, maybe I'll you know rent crisis one figure out what that game's all about um, but anyway guys I hope you guys enjoyed this game final score was 58 and 4 uh, with the gold Galil please uh, rate the video if you enjoyed it. it really helps me out it only takes a fraction of a second and now I will link you on the screen to that crisis 2 trailer bye